Ja, 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 We've been having seven nights of prayer. We did our sixth night last night, amen. God has been just showing out, amen, this week in prayer, amen. We end our seven days of prayer this evening, amen. What I would like to do is move prayer up to 5.30. That way at 6.30 we can eat, amen. 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 See, the rest of them ain't got to say amen. They ain't been coming. That's all right. We have the first day of the party. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's all right. Don't, it's all right. Look down your road and say, I did it for you too. Don't worry. I did it for you too. If you didn't do it, I did it for you. It's my prayer. You're going to do it next time. Just join us on the next go round. Amen. This won't be our last time. We did it for you. We pray for you this week. We pray for your families. We pray for your finances. We pray for your marriages. We pray for your children. Amen. We decreed in the class of things all week and God showed up and showed out. Amen. 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 We expected him to continue to move mightily. Amen. When you turn that plate down, God turns his presence up. Amen. When you turn the plate down, he turns his presence up. And that's what you want. You want to walk in the presence of God. And so we're excited today. I hope I'm in the right church. If not, I'm going to find one. Amen. Amen. Because when we get in there, we're going to be, you know, we're going to go. Then we're going to just come down. Amen. Y'all, we're going over to the book of Matthew 17 and Mark 9. Matthew 17, Mark 9. It should be a very familiar passage of scripture. Can you refresh that and go to, I think I gave you, that's right, no, that's right. Matthew 17 and 14. When they approached the crowd, a man came up to Jesus, kneeling before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and suffers terribly, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they were not able to heal him. And Jesus answered, You unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and asked, Why could we not drive it out? He answered. Let's, start, let's go back. I'm going to just briefly, because I just saw the Spirit say something right there. Why is it that when they brought it to the disciples, they couldn't do it as if they weren't already exposed, that they needed to go to God in private and ask him a private question of something that's already made public knowledge? They brought the son to the disciples. They couldn't do nothing. So why they got to ask him in private that they couldn't do it? Why we couldn't do it? You might as well ask him in public. Yeah, you're right. Amen. You've already been exposed. Don't be exposed in this season. Folks that think you got power, folks that think you're a prayer warrior, folks that think you can prophesy you're a prophet, and then they come up to you need something, then you expose them what they believe that you got. You really ain't got it because you said, I can't get no amen. Don't you got it? I told you it's going to turn up. Don't worry. It's going to be a different type of fire, y'all. Huh? God wants us in this season to have what we portray that we got. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. He don't want you to just shout like you got power. He wants you to walk in it. He don't want you to just pray like you anointed. He wants you to walk and be anointed. He don't want you to just give a word and that same word don't manifest itself in your own life. God wants whatever you portray yourself as to be the same thing on the inside of you. Hallelujah. So why couldn't we drive it out? Put it up. Next verse. He answered, because of your little faith, your lack of trust and confidence in the power of God. For I assure you and most solemnly say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and if it is God's will, it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Yeah. 
But this kind of demon does not go out itself by prayer and fasting. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Read that again. But this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. How you get him out? By prayer and fasting. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. we're going to briefly go to war. And we get ready to tell our devils, it's time for you to go. Tell them, get somebody else, tell them. Say, tell them, say, my devils get ready to go. They about to flee. They, they get ready to leave my house. They get ready to leave my children. They get ready to get off my job. They get ready to come out of my spirit. They get ready. It's time for them to go, huh? See, before today, hallelujah, I had one ingredient in prayer, but I've attached a, a fast to it. And now God is saying, now I've met the requirement to tell every devil, you got to go. Wow. Look down your road saying, if there's a devil on my road, you got to go. Wow. Look behind you, tell prophets out to the church, if there's a devil in here, you got to go. Wow. You can't stay here. If you're in this place, you got to go. You got to get out of my mind. You got to get out of my head. You got to get out of my heart. You got to get out of my spirit. I will no longer be agitated by you. I won't be frustrated by you. You won't make me trust nobody out in this season. You won't make me fight nobody in this season. You got to go. I, I'm, I'm tired of you talking to me. I'm tired of you keeping me up at night. I'm tired of you being in my children. It is time for you to you got to go. You got to go. You got to go. You've been depressed too long. You've been sad too long. You've been weighed down too long. You've been stressed out too long. You've been worried too long. You got to go. You got to get out your house. Everything that's unusual in your house in 2019 is about to leave in 2020. If it showed up and you didn't know how it got there, it's about to get out today. Tell us, it's got to go. Let's look at it. Father, we thank you for your word and bless in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for it to go. I'm going to preach from two different places today. We went over Matthew 17. We're going to go over to Mark 9. For the sake of time, I'm going to cut out my introduction. And I'm going to jump right in. Mark 9, 17. Read that one, Bridget. One of the crowd replied to him, Teacher, I brought you my son, possessed with a spirit that makes him unable to speak. He what? Possessed with a spirit that makes him what? Unable to speak. He's possessed with a spirit which makes him unable to speak. He's possessed with a spirit that makes him unable to open his mouth. This means that anytime you're fighting with opening your mouth, it is not, y'all better do what I'm saying. It is highly likely that you, what you are really wrestling with is a devil. I can't get no. And some of you, the reason why you're in here struggling even with praise and worship, struggling with prayer life, struggling with being committed to God, struggling with praise and struggling with shouting, is not because you're wrestling with uh, 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 what you think is the enemy of your hater. It's not the enemy of the person on your robe. What you're really wrestling with is a demon that got your tongue. I can't get no left in here. This is why when you come into the house of God and when you say you're fighting with your flesh, you call it your flesh. You call it your flesh. You call it your flesh. And you realize, watch this today, that you have not been fighting with what you call your flesh, but what you have been fighting with is what we call a devil. Uh -huh. Okay. If for whatever you're feeling in the house today is trying to keep you from opening your mouth, and praising God and worshiping God. And you call it just a feeling. You call it, you ain't feeling good. You call it, you ain't in the mood. You call it, you ain't up to it today. You call it, I just don't want to be bothered. No, it ain't that you just don't want to be bothered. You ain't in the mood. It ain't that you just not feeling up to it. What you're really wrestling with is a devil. I just come to expose a devil today. And I'm telling you that after today, that devil got to know you won't want to not be in the mood no more. You're going to be in the mood every day. Hallelujah. You're going to have a smile every day. You're going to have a joyous spirit every day. You're going to be shouting every day. You're going to have a praise every day because you got to get rid of the devil. Right. Something trying to keep you from using your greatest weapon. Yeah, then yeah. you are not dealing with the fleshly thing. You are dealing with the spiritual thing that wants to possess your life. Wow. Uh -oh. Remember that demons cannot rule in the earth unless they are in possession of flesh and blood. All right. 
Uh, see, a demon or a devil don't have no power unless they got you to use. Wow. I wish I could find the church right there. A devil or a demon ain't got no power unless they got a body to use. That's why your haters hate on you, and that's why they get on social media and talk about you. Because the devil can't mess with you unless he got a body to use. Right. And the truth of the matter is, some of you are not being bothered by a devil. Some of you are being used by one. Right. Oh, Jesus. Don't, don't, don't walk out of this sanctified church now. Don't walk out. That's okay. Don't, that's okay. Because I come to get rid of the devil day. Unless, watch this, unless you realize that sometimes the devil gets on, you call it, the devil gets on my shoulder, you know, he just want to make me do these things, he just jump on my shoulder and I'm wrestling between two opinions. Yeah, the devil ain't on your shoulder, he want to be in your body, he want to be in your spirit, he want to cause you to do things, he want to possess you. And so I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, in this season, don't be used by a devil. Don't worry, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Wait, tell him, say, don't be used by the devil. Don't be used by the devil to gossip. Don't be used by the devil to be messy. Don't be used by the devil to talk about something. Don't be used by, can't get no hair right there. Don't be used by the devil to make folk believe something about a person that they ain't even met yet. Don't be used by the devil to make folk believe something about a person that they ain't even met yet. Don't be used by the devil to make folk believe something about a person that they ain't even met yet. Don't be used by the devil. By the devil. Don't be used, don't be used, don't be used, don't be used. You know how people say the cat got your tongue. No, the cat ain't got your tongue. The devil got your tongue. The devil got your tongue. The devil got when you say things you ain't got no business. That ain't your flesh. It's the devil. You might want to check your sheets because the devil might have crept in your spirit by that thing that's laying beside you that don't belong there. Because it's sleeping there illegally. I can't get no help right there. Y'all ain't got to preach. Y'all ain't got to holler back. You ain't got to say amen. Because some of you, the devil crept in your house and you let them in. Some of y'all can't get no help. Some of you let the devil in your house and you want to call him out, but you invited him in. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, the devil getting ready to go. Even if I got to put him out when I get home. Even if I got to put him out. When I get home, amen. I am talking about two things. You'll catch it on your way home. Some of you got to put it out. You got some of y'all got to put them out. You got to put her out. Some of I can't get no help right there. Amen. Because some people are being used yeah. You're right. by a devil. Let's look at the text. Read it, Christian. One of the crowd replied to him, Teacher, I brought you my son, possessed with a spirit which makes him <laughs> unable to speak. And whenever it seizes him, Intending to do harm, it throws him down, and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes stiff. See, he don't want nothing but for you not to speak life over yourself. He don't, he don't want, see, he don't care not really about your body. He just don't want you to open your mouth and say what the words say. So he want to get you to shut your mouth. I can't get no amens right there. That's why it's hard for some of y'all to praise and worship God. He's sitting there convincing you that there's no need for all that. They doing too much. They, they doing a lot. No, it ain't that we doing a lot. We freeing ourselves when we open our mouths. We're getting rid of devils when we open our mouths. We're getting stuff out of our house. We're getting stuff out of our children. We're getting stuff out of the bloodline. We're getting rid of generational curses. So I urge you this morning, it's the fight past the devil that wants to keep your mouth closed. Look at this. I told your disciples to get it out. They could not do it. Uh-oh. Get up the next verse. Jesus asked his father. He asked who? His father. Who he asked? His father. He asked who? His father. He asked the who father. Did he ask God or did he ask the boy's father? The boy's father. He asked who? His father. his father or God. Which one did he ask? It's in lowercase, right? They said, lowercase, he asked the boy's father. If it was God, then it would be capitalized. So he asked the boy's father. He asked the boy's father what? How long has this been happening to him? And he said what? Since childhood. So that means he ain't no child no more. I can't say no more. You mean tell me this been going on in your house with your child for a long time and you just now bringing him to Jesus? Wow. Oh, I can't get no more. I can't get no more. I just, huh? But I'm encouraged in the text because I'm encouraged in the text because in this text I see something that God is prophesying to the body. He said, I want you to look closely in the text. You ought to be encouraged. Read it again, Bridget. Jesus asked the boy's father. He asked who? The boy's he asked who? The boy's, the boy's father came back to church. He showed back up. He didn't sit on the couch no more. He didn't lay at the house. Your husband come to church. Your the baby daddy, he come to church. He he coming back. He's about to find Christ. He he coming and God's gonna use the child to do it. I can't do no more. I wish I just had about 
around five baby mamas or five sisters that had men that were still at the house. God get ready to bring the father back to, I think. He get ready to bring the father back to prophecy. God, he about to use the children to do it, but he gonna call the men to come back to church. See, it wasn't the woman that asked Jesus, it was the father that came to Jesus. I'm encouraged that in this season, God is about to start allowing the fathers to bring the children back. Uh oh, the women ain't got to do it no more. He got to give you a point in this. I wish I could prophesy to somebody. He got to give the women a much needed point in this season. And he get ready to allow the fathers to do something that they had been doing for a long time. He get ready to allow the fathers to step into their spiritual position. I wish I could find the church and get excited right there. We are calling the fathers back to the church today. We are calling the fathers back to God today. God said they are coming back. Oh, can I talk to you? Yeah. Uh, baby mama, don't get mad when your daddy, when the, the boys or the girl's daddy call them and say, I want to take my child with me to church today. Let them go. Yes, sir. I can't get no help like that. I can't get I don't care if they ain't been in their life 20 years. If they call them and say, I want to take them to church, then you need to let them go. Because if God says he don't do a thing and you still mad about what they did to you, then God can never work a work that he's trying to work because you're in the way. I can't get no help like that. And realistically, many of the reasons why the men ain't in the fun in the children's life is not because they don't want to be there. It's because some of the women forced them out because they still mad at the man. I can't get no help. You mad at the man, and so you make the child suffer as a result of you still need to be healed. But some of the women right now need to forgive what a man did to you in your past so you can move on and God can bring the men back. Get ready to see fathers bringing their children to church, especially their sons. Hallelujah. To Jesus. Wow. God says that the fathers get ready to bring the children, and then the children gonna be saved by the Savior. Uh-oh. Oh, look at it. Jesus asked the father, how long? It's been going on since he was a child. The devil didn't start working when they got 13. He was working on it when they was five. It's been happening since they was a child. I ignored it and I said that it wasn't nothing. And I checked on it for a little while and then I let it go and just accepted the fact. But the truth of the matter is this has been going on since they was a child. I saw it, but I ignored it because I was too busy in my own life, trying to live my own life, trying to do my own thing, trying to become successful. Successful so much so that I ignored what my child and my children was going through. And so because of that, then I allowed a devil to creep into their life that they've been living with for 10 years since they was five and now they are 15 and they are manifesting things that I'm upset about and I'm wondering how they got in but truth of the matter is they got in when they was five not when they was 15 they got in when they was six not when they were 16 they've been there since they was eight not when they got 18 they've been there since their childhood the demon has often thrown them both into the fire into the water trying to do what See, he after the children, he's trying to kill them. He after the children, he's trying to kill them. But then the father says, what did he say, Bridget? Take pity on us huh. and help us, Jesus. Read it again. He said, but if you can do anything. Oh, that's what I'm looking for right there. Read it again. That's what he said. But if you can do anything, <laughs> take pity on us huh. and help us. He said, if you can. Did you not realize he was talking about Christ? Uh, the one that was going to die and he's going to get up on the third day. He was talking about the Christ, the one that had done many miracles. The Christ, the one that has all power in his hand. He was talking to the answer and the answer was replying, but he didn't even know he was in front of the answer. You know, that's, a lot of you are sitting in the church this morning and you're asking God for an answer, but you're in here and the answer is present. You're talking to the answer. Don't even know that you see the answer right in front of you. The word is standing right in front of you. God is standing right in front of you. And you're asking the Father if he can do it. And that means that you really don't believe that he can do it. But today we come to raise your level of faith to tell you that God can do anything if you believe. I wish I could just buy the church right there. And you will quickly find out that the Father realized he messed up because he was talking to them. Let's look at the text. He said, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Go to the next verse. Jesus said to him, you say to me, if you can. I'm offended. You mean you come to church? 
You come to church, got all this stuff going on in your life, and you don't come here believing that I can take care of what's going on in your life? How dare you show up to church and want to be entertained but don't want to be fixed? How dare you come here and want somebody to keep you aware? I can't get no help. I can't wear the same thing. Why all my folks that would shout just a minute? How, how dare you step in here and say you come to shout and praise a God that you say got all power, but you walk out of here and don't believe he can change your circumstance with the snap of a finger or the speaking and the declaring of the word. You're talking about God, almighty God. The God that spoke when there was nothing and created all things. The, the God that took the dust of the ground and formed man. This same God took his breath and blew it into man and man became a living soul. This same God took his own self, wrapped himself in flesh, put himself in a virgin, placed himself in the earth where then suffered for you so that you would be redeemed back to the Father. This same God. You're talking about God. You mean, you're talking about God? The one that did all of this? You've been coming to church 30 years, hearing all of these messages about Father Abraham and all these folks, and you still don't believe? He says, you say to me, if you can. Yeah. 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 You say to me, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes and trusts. Wait a minute. Say, everything possible. Look down your road and say, it's possible. it's possible. I know it don't look possible, but it's possible. I know your situation looks bad, but it's possible. And God comes to give you an opportunity for possibilities today. He said, it's possible if you believe and you do what? Uh-oh, watch this. And when the father realized he was talking to the right one, watch this, read it, Bridget. He said, I do believe. Immediately, the father of the boy cried out with a desperate, piercing cry, saying, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Hey, wait. That's how a lot of folk in the church is. Yeah. They believe, but they still got unbelief. Yeah. I wish I could do that. I preach to a church today. Yeah. Huh. It's some of you that believe that God can heal, but you may not have the faith enough that he can get rid of cancer. You know, I believe, but I still got unbelief. You know, I believe he can get rid of my headache, but I don't know if he can handle my $200,000 in debt. I believe some things I just don't believe. All things. So I, I realize that I'm talking to the answer. And I realize that all I need is belief and trust in the answer. So let me fix my posture and let me stop being afraid. Watch this to make myself vulnerable and let me get rid of my pride and lower myself and cry out to God and say, I believe just a little bit, but I need help with the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Can I speak to what the 50 people at that's just like that? That's just like the man in the text. I believe, see, y'all don't want to expose y'all. Yeah. See, you can't get a blessing if you in denial. I believe something. But some other things are just hard for me to believe. Why? Because I've gone through so much that nothing has happened that it's just hard for me to believe. But today, the Father is in the room to increase your belief in what you thought was impossible. He says that the Father cries. Shout the Father cries. Shout again, shout the Father cry. Father cry. Uh, shout again, the Father cry. The Father cry. Who cried? Father. Father cried. The men ain't afraid no more to praise God. They ain't afraid no more to worship God. They ain't afraid no more to cry out to God. When they come this time, they ain't gonna have no fear in what folk think about them. It ain't about being sensitive. It ain't about being weak. It ain't about being so super strong and so manly that you can't expose the fact that you need a God. The God that created you. You need that same God. That same God that saved you. The same God that's been protecting your family. You thought you was going to work and providing, but if it wasn't for God giving you the opportunity and the ability to provide, then you would not be anything. The man that you think you are, you are no man without God. I'm trying to just buy the church myself. Who is man that God is mindful of him? There is not a man that is that man ain't got God. I wish I could find about 50 women that have slapped their next door neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm praying that my man get God for real. Huh? Because when he finds God, He's going to be a real man. He ain't going to just be like any kind of man. He's going to be a real man. A real man. What does he do? A real man prays for his family. He worships for his family. He cries out for his family. He's not just a provider. He's not just taking no help like that. He don't just go and earn money. But he know how to lay out before God and get some help for his family. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for that. Hallelujah. We God is raising some real men in this season. The women have been holding the fork up long enough, and God is calling the men back. Alive. The only job you got is to earn money. That ain't the only job you got. That ain't the only job. That ain't the only job. That ain't the only job. I wish I, I wish I could just talk to somebody right there. And some of the women need to let me and be men in this evening. I told you I'm gonna be. It's gonna be lit right here. Some of, some of us got to learn to let go and let him be the man. Amen. Amen. You want him to be the man, but then you don't want to let go of the power. And then when you take the power, you want to manipulate it into your way. I can't get no help like that. Huh? You want to use what you got and think that you can hold and reframe what you have. Amen. Like it ain't nobody else out there that can give it to them. Even when they entertain by somebody else, you mad at the fact I can't get no help. I can't get no help right there. I can tell this a lot that you'll withhold something that God gave to the man so that he can stay in love with your... I can't get no help. I, 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 I can go on to the end of the power. I can go on to the Church. I can't. I wish you. When the daddy, when the father cried out, 
she's to turn to the problem. He said, problem, okay, I've heard the cry of the father. I wish I could just, and because the father has cried out, I got, I got to deal with you today. I can't let this keep going on the same way. So as of today, you deaf and new spirit, you got to come out. And I'm going to do so much for this father that cries out that I'm going to even tell you, you can't even come back. I got to go on because I ain't got no more time left. I got to go on. After screaming out and throwing him into a terrible convulsion, it came out. He said, showed out one last time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the yeah. boy looked so much like a corpse. Well, let's go back to that. He said, he showed out one last Your problem showed out one last time. Uh -huh. It wanted to make you believe that they had been delivered. It wanted to make you believe that God hadn't done it. It wanted to make you believe that it hadn't happened. So it shows out again to bring you in discipline. I wish I could just talk to somebody today. See, some of you thought God didn't do it because it showed out again. It, it came back again. It did it again. I wish I could just find about five people that attested that. You thought, you thought because it showed out again that God hadn't done it. And what happened was, you opened the door for it to stay there again because you were in disbelief by what the enemy showed you. Yeah. 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 Said it showed out again. The boy looked so much like he was dead that folks were saying, huh? Who was it? They ain't had no information, all they had. I can't get you. You worried about them, but they ain't got no information for real. They on the outside looking in. They don't know the business, they just spectators. So, spectators say all kind of stuff, stuff that's true and stuff that lies. You don't know. You can't believe spectators. They gonna be there. There's some of them in here today. They in the church, they spectate. They ain't really participate. They ain't saying amen yet. That's why they ain't blessed. That's why God ain't doing that in their life. That's why they still beat down, bombed down. Cause they but the moment you decide you're going to participate in this God thing, then God will turn to your problem. Yes. Uh, yes. Problem, watch this. The boy looked like he had died. Yeah. Jesus said, okay. He took him by the hand. And he did what? Raised him, Raised him up. He did for him what had, had, hadn't yet happened to him yet. All right. Ooh, Jesus hadn't been raised yet, but he did it for the boy early. Uh, right. The same thing that the father was getting ready to do for his son, Jesus did it for this man's son. I wish I could. He took the boy by the hand. God getting ready to do that for some of y'all families right now. He's about to take some people by the hand and he's about to raise them up. Now, you can't take them back down. You can't beat them back down after the father takes them by the hand and raise them. I wish I could just find some more life. You got to take your boots off and stop beating it down when God is trying to raise up. God said, I'm trying to raise it up, but you keep kicking it I can't even talk about what I want to talk about. So y'all won't let me read the next verse. When he had gone indoors, his disciples began asking him privately, why were we unable to drive it out? He replied to them, this kind of unclean spirit cannot come out. Wait, it's an unclean spirit. And you can't get this one out. Unless you got a combo. You got to hit him with a two-piece. I can't get I can't, I can't get no image. You just can't hit him with a left or a right. You got to give him a combo. You got to give him a one-two. I wish I could just find him. See, I got some fighters in here that know what I'm talking about. You got to hit him with a one-two. You got to you got to hit him with a one-two. You just you hit him one time, they might stop him and get back up. But you got to hit him with a combo. I wish I wish. You got to hit him with fast and play. You, you can't just play. I can't. You can't just fast. But you got to fast and play. And the truth of the matter is, we've been playing all week. And we've been fasting all week. We've been giving the devil two piece combos all week. And today is the day that I wish I could do. I come to prophesy about a hundred of y'all to tell you it's time for the devil to go. I got a two piece combo. And it's not two piece and a biscuit. Amen. I come to hit your devil with a two piece combo. You cannot stay. Amen. It comes down. Let's talk about this two piece. I'm going to pick it up next week. Let's talk about the two piece. Prayer. And fasting, right? right? Prayer. Shout prayer. Prayer. Sit down. How much time? Is <laughs> Got five minutes. I'm going to five. Shout prayer. Prayer. One thing that I find amazing is that 
We, 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 we often talk about how they took prayer out of school. You know, this is my favorite thing to talk about because we often talk about that they took prayer out of schools. But the funny thing to me about that is, yeah, we say that they took prayer out of schools, but no one speaks about the absence of prayer in the home. All right. All right. You mad about prayer coming out of schools, but prayer ain't even in your house. Okay. How are we going to, oh, I wish I could do it. How are we going to get prayer back in the schools and we ain't got prayer in the home? In this next season, we're going to teach our children to pray and they're going to take prayer out of schools. I wish I Just stop. So here right there, you have to stop making excuses for what you don't have and start rearing raising people to take what we say we ain't got into places where it ain't. Yeah. 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 Am I in a real church? Yeah. Okay, so you got to put the prayer in the children so they can take it to school. Right. If we pray more in our homes, we could take prayer to work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh, and I can't pray at work, can't talk about God. If you talk about them at the house, you already talk about them at work. Yeah. I can't get no help like that. We can take prayer to work. Who told you you couldn't start a work prayer group? Who told you you couldn't pray on your lunch break? I can't get no help like that. We got to stop using excuses that someone else has removed a spiritual component of our world when that same thing is not even active in our personal lives. The problem is we want manifestation before we have accepted all of it. I'm about to say something about that. We want resources, but we ain't committed to it yet. We want financial support, but we hadn't decided whether or not we're going to sow into it ourselves. You want God to supply all of it, and you ain't even sowed into yourself. I can't get no help. But you must know that you have to accept the call, accept the assignment, accept the will of God before he provides the resource and the financial support for a goal and a dream that you got, because he got to know you committed to it before he committed right. to it. You're waiting on manifestation before commitment. But God is waiting on your commitment to, to it before he called it to manifest. Watch this. There are many of us, we walk ahead of God. Come here. Come here. A lot of us. A lot of us, we, we walk ahead of God. That's God. Come back. Some of us, we walk Behind God. Keep on. Some of us, we walk ahead of God. Some of us, we walk behind God. But the way you're supposed to walk is you're supposed to walk and you're supposed to run into God. You're supposed to collide with God. You're supposed to run into him because if you go before him, then you'll mess it up. If you go behind him, you're too late. But if you collide with him, you can walk with him. And I can, he'll take you where you're supposed to go. You're supposed to collide with him. But the only way to collide with God is you have to collide in prayer. Look at your name and say, you got to pray. You looking for him in the grocery stores. You looking for him in the restaurants. You looking for him in your car. You looking for him in your house. You looking for him in your marriage. But you can't find him in your marriage, in the restaurant, in the store, because you ain't found him in prayer. If you're going to find God in the place, that place is called prayer. Shout prayer. prayer. When Jesus was going through his toughest time, he went in the wilderness a little bit further. He told his disciples to stay here. He said, I got to go in and find the Father. And where you going to find him, Jesus? He said, I'm going to find him in prayer. Yeah. All right. If you're going to find him, you got to find him in prayer. Shout prayer. prayer. Okay, now, that means that your body is a requirement. And you, are, you have got to be present in order to get what God got for you. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Your body is a requirement. He said, you got to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the what? Reasonable sir. You got your body is the requirement. But if your body ain't present when he show up, you can't get what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. God says, prophesy to the people and tell them something hard. He says, I'm no longer going to hold blessings for you until you show up. You must show up because it just might be the Sunday or the Wednesday or the night that God has plans to do it for you. But he ain't going to do it for you by holding on to it until when you show up. Yeah. I can't get no you. You, you, know, you think you can miss, miss, and miss, and miss, 
and then comes when it's convenient. But see, how about what if if I told you that God might show up when you don't come? Yeah. You're looking for God. He in a place and he told you that he gonna be there and then you don't even show up. Then you want him to come the next week. God just catch me next Sunday. Now I was at his past Sunday and you weren't even there. So God, you got to wait till I come back around. I wish I could get up myself. God says I'm no longer holding blessings up for you until you show up. Then he says, tell him you can't afford to miss God in 2020. You cannot afford to miss out on the move of God. You cannot afford for God to show up and you are somewhere else. He says, tell the people that the fast unlocked a new level of being able to deal with devils who've invaded your life and space. And not only that, you will be able to discern when a devil is present and you're going to be able to get rid of one that you haven't been able to get rid of for years. And I don't know about you, but I've I dealt with a lot of devils in this past year. i dealt with a lot of devils over the last couple of weeks, over the last 10 years, and I'm so sick and tired of them ruling and reigning and thinking big and bad. And I'm no longer in fear of them, but I realize that after this fast, I got power over them, I got authority over them, I have watched it, I got a word for them, and when they show up this time, yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, now I need you to stand, because I'm almost done. Hallelujah. Don't expose some people. No, I'm just teasing. Just teasing. He said, why we couldn't do it? He said, this time, only come out by fasting. What we do this week? Fast and pray. We did what? Fast and pray. What you do? Fast and pray. Which, which, y'all fast and pray. Yeah. So he said, it come out by fast and pray. All right. It come out by fast and you did what? Fast and pray. So because you met this requirement, yeah. it's yeah. about to come out. Yeah. I'm telling you what I'm, y'all better hear what I'm saying. God says, today is the day. It's time for your devil. He got to go. He's been in your house too long, been in your marriage too long, been working with your children too long, been on your job too long, been agitating you and frustrating you, causing you to behave and act certain ways, causing you to run away from God, causing you to stay away, whatever he's been doing in your life. Today is the day he got to go. Okay. Today. Y'all ain't got to be sitting. Don't worry. He got to Okay, today is the day you got to go. Okay, watch this. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Come here, baby. Come here, bro. Come here, come here. Come here, Keisha. Come here, come here, bro. Y'all, y'all stand around. Y'all stand around. Bro, I'm sorry, but hey, you gonna have to eat it anyway. <laughs> you got to give him a two-piece combo. This is what fasting and prayer does. My enemy comes at me. See, y'all see a moving. Did yeah, yeah, yeah. y'all see a moving? Yeah. Did y'all see them? Yeah. They're gonna go with me. Yeah. I got back up. You got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got back up. So now when I. <laughs> Here the enemy is. I'm fighting. I hit the enemy. Boom. <laughs> Wait. I thought I had to hit him twice. But I had backup. So after I hit him once, backup hit him twice. Let's go back. Let's do it again. He told him to prophesy and tell me in this season you got backup. You ain't got to fight real hard. You just got to be willing to get in there. Okay, he is. That's my enemy. He's sharp too, ain't he? When I get down with you, he's going to look as good when I get down with you. Amen. So he coming. Now watch this, wait. The good thing is, I used to run from him. But now today I know I got back up, I ain't afraid. Y'all know how it is. You might be scared when you fight by yourself or when you got your sibling with you. Or your best friend, I think they don't have right there. Or you got your partners with you. You talk a lot more when you got your partners or your siblings. You know, y'all ain't gotta talk about it. All the scared folks know what I'm talking about. I don't see it. They know what I'm talking about. Because if you big and bad, you'll talk when you ain't got nobody. But if you stand, you only talk when you got help. Amen. I wish I... And so now, you know you got help with you. You don't even talk. Ah, devil, you are a liar. You are a cheater. You are a thief, a thief. In the name of Jesus, you got to go. So I hit my enemy. Then I tell the enemy, 
I ain't ready to fight you no more. Cause this battle ain't mine anyway. Uh -huh. I just wanted you to know I wasn't scared of you. So I got my lick in, but now I'ma leave you to my help. I can't do it. Okay, good. Cause guess what? I ain't trying to get bubbled up in no fight because I got to look like I ain't been in one. I got to do it. So the only way to look like you ain't been in no fight after you were really in a war is for you to hit one time and get out of the way. I wish I could get Bible church right there. The Bible said, all your help comes from the Lord. And hey, y'all surround. He ain't so big and bad no more. I'm talking stuff from the sidelines. See, I told you I was going to get you. I told you. You didn't want none of me. I told you. See, I told you. See, you had all that now. You were saying all that stuff. You were posting all them things. But I told you I was going to get you. Uh, I wish I had some y'all think you know him like this. Now look at him. He's saying that. He ain't got nothing to say. Huh? Because he's scared. He said he know who he's dealing with. I am a child of God. I am anointed. I touch not my anointed. And do not profit no harm. When you touch God's child and God comfort. Snap your neighbor and say, my God is coming for some folk in this season. He's coming for some devils in this season. And it is time for them to go. They will not stay. My house and in my marriage and my children and my relationship. Good you got help? What's your hands up for? He's trying to receive, baby. He just my throat. Now watch this. Now your enemy become your footstool. You beat him so bad, they come on your side. I can't do those right there. He didn't change over sides. He didn't change. He didn't come over to the good side. Now he my help. God said you're going to win so big in this season that every devil that fought you going to come on your side. Yeah. I don't like getting scratched up. No. Hey Amen. I like my face. You got to stay free. Amen. I done got enough bumps and bruises. I don't need no more. So this season, I got to learn how to let go and let God. All right. uh, what's my role in this season? These times only come out by. If you live a fasting and a prayer life, you can get rid of more devils. I can't get rid of more devils. I'm telling you, if you got a devil on the line, do a fast in a week and include some prayer. You're going to be hitting that devil with a two-piece combo. They're going to be nicer than they ever been. They're going to be smiling and holding the conversation. And you're going to be like, what is this devil? <laughs> Don't worry, I got a scripture to back it up. Go and read it. Acts 13 and 3. The Bible says, after they fasted in prayer, the, pray, the apostles imparted, laid hands on them. When they went out, they were able to know who the devils was around them. And the Bible says they started calling them out. You ain't nothing but a devil. And I'm so tired of you bothering me on my job that after today you won't even have eyes to see. So I call you to your blind state. And the Bible says that the demon obeyed the word of the one that had fasted and prayed. Yeah. He had no longer had eyes to mess with him because he couldn't even see. You got to know in this season you got power in your tongue. You want to keep your mouth closed because he don't want you to say what the Lord is saying. But if you'll learn to fight through it, open your mouth. There's freedom in your mouth. There's deliverance in your mouth. There's breakthrough in your mouth. There's blessings in your mouth. There's prosperity in your mouth. There's good health in your mouth. You just got to force yourself to open it. I know the devil want to keep it shut. I know he want to cause it to clamp together. I know he want to keep you from praising God because you're worried about what somebody's going to say about what they know about you. But guess what? If they know about you, so what? Let them see God change your entire life. Let them keep talking eventually. People are going to see the change and know the change and know that it's real. So what if they think it's fake right now? Let them keep looking. When you become so blessed and they need you to give them a blessing, then they're going to wish you, they got saved when you got saved. I wish I could prophesy that to somebody. Some of you, your friends around you, calling you foolish because you're doing all this church stuff. They're going to wish they had a dealing with you at the same time because you're going to get blessed before them. 
then they're going to be catching up. Amen. I wish I could find a church. God is getting ready to bless you. So if you live this type of lifestyle, a fasting and a prayer lifestyle, You're right. you got to turn over the plate. You got to give God a sacrifice. Amen. When you give God a sacrifice, his presence shows up. Amen. Don't be afraid to cry out to God and admit you don't got it all. You don't know it all. You, you can't even help your own children. That's okay. I know you've been going to church 30 years, but there's some things that you're not going to be able to do in your own strength. There's some things that only God can do. And sometimes you just got to cry out to him and let him do it. Do not negate the power in the cry. Do not negate the power in the cry. Even when Jesus dealt with the toughest thing of his life, the Bible says he groaned within himself. He had a cry in his spirit, a wail that nobody understood. See, sometimes people ain't going to understand why you cry. They're not going to understand why you moan. They're not going to understand why you wail because they, they were not in what you were in, so they never going to understand it. So don't be afraid to cry out to God and receive the blind Bartimaeus cried out. Jesus came outside and said and did what he needed to do. Yeah. All because he cried out. Yes. Your cry got power this season. God get ready to wipe the tears from your eye, but your cry got power. You might have to give him one last cry, but after that one, he gonna turn to your problem and deal with your situation. Right. Oh my God. To so all of this bit, we lifted our hands. Because God is about to do something. I'm telling you, He told me to tell you and to tell your devil. Some of them came to church, not you not a devil, but your devil came with you. They gone, they, they gone already. I didn't preach, they gone. I was about to say they're about to go now. The Holy Ghost didn't preach so good, they gone. You just don't let them come back in your car, in your house, in your like don't let them back in your bedroom. They gone. They have to leave. They got to get out your mind. They got to get out your emotions. They got to get out your money. They got to get out of, out of your health. They got to get out. They've been there too long. God said they, they live their stay. It's, got, it's, time for them. it's time for you to kick them out. All right. They ain't paying rent no way. Amen. You don't let nobody live in your house for free. Right. Kick them out. They ain't going to pay you. Kick them out. Talk to yourselves. If it's a devil and you say you got to go, it's one of me. The devil got to go. I got, I got a couple of them. If the pastor got a couple of them, surely maybe the saints got a couple. You're right. You're right. It's the devil and me that's got to go. Yeah. It can't keep me from God no more. Amen. It can't keep me running from God yeah. because I feel unworthy because there's a devil in me. Yeah. All right. But guess what? Even though there's a devil in me, there's a God in me that's bigger than my devil. All right. All right. I wish I could preach to about five people. There's a God in me that's bigger than the devil in me. And that God in me is driving that devil out. You got to go. The two can't occupy the same space. So today God and you are kicking the devil. Close your eyes. Wherever the devil is, think about where he is. Last, last place you saw him, I don't care. On your job, in your house, in your bedroom, in your children, in your car. Some of y'all say he in your air conditioner. He ain't in the air conditioner. He won't buy it. He in your hater, your enemy. The person always got their name in your mouth. Think about the last place you saw him, the last place you experienced that devil. Now I want you to talk to him right now and say, you got to go. It's time for you to go. I'm telling you, it is time for him to go. We're going to live the freest life that we've ever lived. In 2020.